The T69 2G is a recently introduced replacement for the Chinese T62 545 premium tank. Based on a Chinese variation of the Soviet T-55, the T-69 made up the bulk of China's tank forces for most of the Cold War. In a similar story to the T-55, as the tank staging became outdated, they were sold on to foreign second and third rate armies. One country that bought the tank was Bangladesh, and the T-69 2G is a joint Sino-Bangladeshi improvement upgrade to the aging T-69. Alright lads, today I'm going to be talking about the performance, weapons and playstyle of the Chinese T-69 2G. Starting as always with the basics, this tank is a rank 6 battery rating 8.7 medium tank located in the Chinese tech tree. Being a rank 6 premium, it will be effective at researching between the ranks of 1 and 7, allowing you to grind out every vehicle in the Chinese tech tree with this tank. To get this tank, you will have to purchase it in a pack on the Guardian store. For a price of 60 euros, you get the tank, 2000 golden eagles and 15 days of premium time. After purchasing this tank from the store, you will need to add it to your lineup for a cost of 10,000 silver lions. You can then additionally purchase the expert and ace qualifications for this tank, costing 1,120,000 silver lions and 2,100 golden eagles respectively. Being a premium, the T69 enjoys a very low repair cost of 3,700 silver lions, allowing you to take risks in this tank without paying a high price in the hangar. Going on to the rewards, the Type 69 has a base RP modifier of 2.26, which gives you an RP modifier of 452% with a free-to-play account, and 678% with a premium account. With a base Silver Lion modifier of 1.4, you'll have the same Silver Lion modifier as the other top tier premiums. You can expect a 280% Silver Lion modifier with a free-to-play account, and 420% with a premium account. So is it worth buying this tank, and how does it compare to the other Rank 6 premiums? Stick around for the rest of the video and find out. Okay, so moving on to engine and performance, you can see that this tank is powered by an engine which produces 580 horsepower. Combined with the vehicle's weight of 37 tonnes, it gives the tank a power to weight ratio of 15.67 horsepower per tonne. This is very low compared to the other premium tier 6 tanks. It gives the tank very slow acceleration and generally just makes it sluggish in all aspects of driving. Despite the poor acceleration, the tank will reach a top speed of 50km per hour, albeit it'll take a very long time to get there. Ok so going into a test drive and the first thing I think to notice is that this tank does not get the ability to neutral steer, you cannot turn on the spot, it will be a hindrance in tight or urban city combat. Although the top speed on the timesheet says you can get up to 50km per hour, on rough terrain you are limited to around 35-40km to 40 km per hour. To conclude, the mobility of the T69-2G is pretty terrible, especially when compared to the other tier 6 premiums. Tanks such as the AMX-30 Super and the OF-40, and even the Leopard L-44 which isn't noted for its mobility, still put this tank to shame. Ok so moving on to the protection of this vehicle, and you can see that the upper frontal plate and the turret cheeks are covered in ERA blocks which are effective against stopping chemical rounds. We'll be testing the protection of this vehicle against both HEATFS and APFSDS rounds. To test against chemical munitions, we'll be using the DM12 round. Starting as always with the lower frontal plate, you can see that we have around 190mm worth of protection. And the upper frontal plate, which is covered in ERA blocks, provides around 570mm worth of protection. Moving up to the turret armour, you can see that we have a massive jump in performance from the ERA blocks, due to angling mainly. You can see that we go from 600 up to over 1000mm of protection against chemical munitions. This is only true for the turret cheeks. The unprotected gun mantlet is a measly 200mm thick and pretty much anything will go right through here. Moving on to the side of the vehicle and you can see that the hull has no protection whatsoever against heat of fest rounds providing a measly 140mm worth of protection. Moving up to the turret you see that we do still have ERA blocks will stop most heat of fest rounds up to around 600mm. It is worth noting however that the rear of the turret where your commander and gunner will be sitting is completely unprotected from the ERA blocks. As expected, the rear of the vehicle is the weakest part of the armour, with the rear hull only providing around 50mm, and the turret, even though it has caged armour, it still won't protect you from heat FS rounds. Ok, so moving on to the armour performance against APFSDS, we'll be testing it using DM23 round, the most common fin round found at around battery rating 9.0. Again, starting with the lower frontal plate, you can see that we have around 170mm worth of protection, and the upper frontal plate is slightly better at around 200mm of protection. Because of the well sloping turret sides, the turret cheeks are pretty much an auto ricochet against APFSDS rounds. However, the centre of the turret around the gun mantlet is an easy penetration for DM23 rounds, providing only around 220mm of protection. 
Moving on to the side of the vehicle, you can see that the hull only provides around 97mm worth of protection, which drops down to around 80mm as you approach the rear. The turret is slightly better, providing around 200mm at its thickest at the front near the gun, and dropping down to around 100 at the rear of the turret. And finally the rear of the vehicle, the hull provides around 50mm of protection, whereas the turret provides around 70mm of protection. Overall, the armour of the T69 2G is pretty good against chemical rounds. However, most tanks at battery rating 9.0 will not be firing heat FS rounds, they'll be firing APFSGS rounds, and as you can see, they can pretty much lull pen you from the front anywhere, never mind the sides. While the above average armour does offer good protection against SPA and small calibre auto cannons, you are still easily penable with our most 105mm guns, making your additional armour essentially just dead weight. This combined with your underperforming engine, just makes you a slow, easily penetrable tank, with low survivability. Ok so moving on to the armament of the tank, and you can see that it is armed with the 105mm ZPL94 cannon. This gun is fully stabilised, and has an ok 18 degrees of gun elevation, but a terrible 4 degrees of gun depression. This really does limit the tank's ability to work a ridgeline. You can carry 44 rounds in total, but only 19 of those rounds will be classed as first stage ammunition, meaning they will reload faster. If we go to the reload skill in the tank loader, you can see that we have a base reload rate of 9.75 seconds and a top reload rate of 7.5 seconds. This is significantly slower than the NATO 105mm guns. Another area where this tank is worse than its NATO counterpart is in the targeting or horizontal turret drive speed. Under the targeting skill in the gunner, we can see that we have a base targeting speed of 14 degrees per second and a top speed of 20 degrees per second. When compared to the American tier 6 premium, the XM1, you see that HIT's top targeting speed is 40 degrees per second, double yours. The poor horizontal turret drive and previously mentioned poor mobility makes this tank feel incredibly sluggish in a fight. I'd also like to point out that this tank does get access to a laser rangefinder, but only night vision. This tank does not get access to thermal imaging. Ok so moving on to your ammunition, and you can see that we have 4 options available. The stock shell is a Type 83 heater fest shell with a max penetration of 400mm. This is essentially just the DM12 shell found in the German tech tree. The second shell is the DTB1 high explosive variable time shell. This essentially has a proximity fused warhead, which will detonate in close contact with low flying planes or helicopters. Although its low explosive mass of 1.66kg will mean that a near direct hit will be needed. The third round is a Type 83 Hess shell. This has 127mm of penetration, but a rather low muzzle velocity of 750m per second, making it quite hard to aim. While it can be useful for hull breaking lightly armoured targets, I believe the next shell will be your go-to round. The real meat and potatoes of this tank is a Type 83 APFSDS round. It has a rather high muzzle velocity of 1500m per second and can penetrate 351mm of armour at 0 degrees and still over 200mm at 60 degrees, making this one of the better performing APFSDS rounds at battery rate in 8.7. While most of the other tier 6 premiums will be armed with a variant of the DM23 fin round, the Type 83 round is more of equivalent to the American M774 round, found on the Abrams at battery rate in 10.0. So essentially you are a battle rating 8.7 vehicle, armed with the ammunition of a battle rating 10.0 vehicle. The T69 also has a coaxially mounted rifle caliber machine gun, as well as a Pinto mounted 12.7mm machine gun. The ammunition performance of this vehicle is rather impressive. The Type 83 APFSDS round is by far the best round on any rank 6 premium. However your rather slow reload rate does let you down here, as you will be firing a full second slower than most of a 105mm NATO guns. While having the extra millimeters of penetration is nice, I think I would rather still have the extra fire rate. And then you have the more subtle downsides, such as the lack of thermal optics and the terrible 4 degrees of gun depression. Ok so that's the overview done with and I'm going to go on to some gameplay. Oh, we found the entire enemy team it looks like. Try and get his ammo rack here. No, well he's not carrying any ammo. Gonna go back to this VT1. If we can get past his engine. Yeah. Sabre on this tank is pretty good. Oh, we got his gunner. His turret ring. Well, there's still that red camp wagon over here. Got 
got an enemy over here. Let's see if we can get any sort of shot on. I did see him then. Pretty grayed out. Target undamaged. What the hell? That C2A1, its armor is so true it's when it's gone into the game. Right, so we got his commander gunner. Right, so he's not moving at least. Now another thing we can see that the reload speed of this uh, tank is pretty poor when stock. Did they manage to get the uh, C2A1 though? So there's an enemy VFW here. I can't really kill him. Well, I can, but it's going to take me a lot of shots. I don't know why. Or maybe maybe he's only a battle rating 5.7 player. And he's just unlocked the C2A1 and now he's brought it into top tier. That's quite funny, but... I'm trying to get his ammo rack. So you see I just hit above it there. See, so my reload of 9 points something seconds, it's... He'll be able to get his gunner up in that time. Ah oh, well, finally hold up. Oh, I forgot he could hell break those tanks. We could have one shot him before, like a bit dumb. Is it one of those bloody VF things? Oh, that was a good shot. Kind of spawn camping, but I couldn't actually see him. And we did save our friendly Huey. For about a rating 8.7 tank, and especially for a premium, which people are going to buy this, probably without really researching it, because they, they just want a premium. This is pretty much just a cash grab. It's got awful... Just I can't put into words just how bad everything is. Mobility, firepower, and protection. It's like the... The APD, 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 oh, whatever, APFSGS round is pretty powerful, but it only reloads every max 7.5 seconds, which is nearly a second slower than the best for the NATO guns. So you have the same kind of round as NATO fires, firing slower, in a tank that's much slower, in a tank that's also much less protected armor-wise. And usually it's alright because premiums are bounced usually because they have like a good gun but they've got low armour and they don't really have any uh it's like they're bounced on the good in one thing but bad in another. Whereas this tank isn't really it's not got anything that outstands on it. Like I've mentioned the dart, the the APF SDS round is good but it's the same round as on other vehicles, it's only 350mm pen. Yet 100 mm is more on the uh, T62s. So it's not particularly anything to write home about. We're just going to try and get in a little bit of cover here. Can't really advance. I'm going to pull back, see if we can get a shot into this swap. Assume is a BMP of some sort. Oh, I see him, it's a Bradley. Oh, can't see shit there. Even the real, the reverse speed of this, seven kilometers per hour, battery rating eight point seven. I'm gonna try and get up here onto the left. I don't know if we're able to get a shot into that from three. Might have a better chance here because it's a bit lower. Yeah, got him. I don't know why he was sticking himself out so much. But again, our mobility for me to turn around and get back towards B is literally more than 15 seconds. It's just very, very sluggish. And like what? It's not even, you can't even make the argument that it's heavy and sluggish because it's well armed. It's not. But, oh, is he looking at me? Engine and transmission. I don't know if he's looking at me. That's the problem. I hope he isn't. No, well, someone's got him. I'm kind of just speaking my mind as a play at the minute. I 
feel bad for that guy. I bet he was trying to get his gun on me, but because it's the the S tank, it's just like spinning around. Am I gonna get bombed here? Yeah. Rip. Fantastic. Oh well, not dead. Oh, I'm not going to survive this though. Special. Oh well. There we go. That's what happens in War Thunder. Kill someone and they just revenge bomb you. To conclude, I think that the t 692 g is not worth your money. The slightly better than average ammunition you get access to does not make up for your shortcomings in the mobility or armour department. Even with this ammo, your reload is a full second slower than the standard NATO 105mm guns, putting you at a significant disadvantage. This tank has the same issues as the T-55AM. While the armour of the tank is better than most NATO tanks at a similar battle rating, it is still not enough to protect you from the rounds being fired back at you so your armour is essentially just dead weight, significantly reducing the mobility of the vehicle. And with the current Metro of War Thunder being about mobility first, firepower second, and armour third, you really are putting yourself at a disadvantage playing this tank. Compared to some of the other premiums in War Thunder, such as the AMX-30 Super and Leopard L44, premiums which are arguably the strongest tanks at their battle ratings, you and your T-69 don't even come close to them in terms of effectiveness on the battlefield. Your gun penetration is lower, you fire slower, you drive slower, your gun depression is worse, and you don't have thermal optics. The only area where your tank compares favourably is protection against chemical warheads. And let's be honest, most tanks are battery rating 9.0 are firing APFSDS, not HeaterFS. Again, making your ERA pretty ineffective against the majority of opponents you will face. The cost of the T69 2G is the same as the Leopard L44, but you get substantially less bang for your buck. We also need to ask the question, why even bother grinding out the high battle rating Chinese tanks? They aren't competitive at all compared to the NATO and Soviet counterparts, and the Chinese still don't have a tank with a battle rating higher than 9.7. In my opinion, the most fun you can have in the Chinese tech tree is around battle rating 5.7, with the T-34s and the Hellcat. So in my honest opinion, I'd recommend you just buy the battle rating 5.7 T-34-85 premium tank. It is a rank 4, and can be used to grind up to rank 5. While you won't be able to grind out the rank 6 vehicles, you will be saving a lot of money, as it only costs a third of the price of the T69. And let's be honest, you will probably have more fun. As always lads, I hope you found this video helpful, and thank you very much for watching.